Hi guys, welcome. Welcome. Hi everyone. This is what we're gonna paint today. All right, let's wait a couple more minutes for everyone to join and then we're gonna start. In the meantime, just make sure you have all your supplies ready. And um, I'm gonna read comments here in chat and see if anyone has questions before we begin. But yeah, I'll guide you through all our supplies and everything else that you need to know before we start, but just we're gonna wait another couple minutes for everyone to join to make sure we're not missing anyone. And this is what we're painting. Yes, happy Victoria Day weekend. Oh. Can everyone hear me? Because my sound, uh, my YouTube says that the sound is on. I can see my mic going up and down as I speak. Okay, good. Good, awesome. I'm glad you guys can hear me. Sometimes if something just doesn't go right for you, um, you can always just refresh the page and usually that fixes things. Yes, great, awesome, thank you so much. All right, 703, I think we can start and hopefully whoever is not here yet will join us shortly. Welcome everyone, if we haven't met before, my name is Vera, I'll be your instructor for today, and this is what we're painting, and this is super fun, it is just good, especially if this is your first time ever or in a long time, this is a perfect painting for you to paint, it's not too complicated, um, it has a fair share of things here, of course, it has a fair share of steps, but overall, not crazy hard, and you can customize your color, so for example, if you would like to have a little bit more purple in the mountains, you can add it. You can have a darker sky, a lighter sky. You can have different colors of flowers. So in my case, they're just pink. And a couple different shades of pink. There are two shades of pink here. However, you can make them light purple. You can do mix of pink and light purple. You can do, let's say, this in light pink and some orange or white daisies around. So anything you can think of, you can do here. Totally customizable. Now let's go through all our supplies to make sure we have everything that we need. First thing you're going to need is a painting surface. I will be using 16 by 12 inch canvas. So this is what I'm gonna be using. You're free to use anything you want. It doesn't have to be um, exactly this size. Sorry guys, my camera just got super blurry. I wonder if this is, oh yeah, okay, we're back. So um, you don't have to use specifically this size. You can go bigger, you can go smaller, completely up to you. Just make sure you adjust the size of your brushes based on, on the size of your canvas. So I will be suggesting based on the size of my canvas, which is 16 by, 20, uh, 16 by 12. So if you go bigger, go with bigger brushes. If you go smaller, go with smaller brushes and so on. All right, next thing we're going to need is water. So I have some right here. We're also going to need a piece of paper towel or a reusable fabric cloth. I have a piece of paper towel here. Again, nothing special, just a regular piece of paper towel. Napkin will also work just as fine. And we are going to need a couple of different brushes. I'm gonna be using two brushes only. However, you can use three. Three is probably safer way to do, and. If you use two, you're gonna need large brush and medium brush. So you can do just with two brushes, but if you decide to go with three brushes, grab large, medium, and small. In my case, my large and my medium are square, and of course, if you decide to use small brush, you're gonna need a really, really fine brush. Now, if your brushes are not square, it's not a problem at all. In fact, this flowers, are much easier to do with a pointy brush. So if you have, let's say, medium pointy like this, that is a better option for making 
this flowers. Trees are easier to do with a medium square. So again, if you have both, great. If not, just one, whichever, you can still do it. Not a deal breaker. And we're gonna need a palette or something to mix our paint on, so make sure you have that. Now as far as paint, I'm gonna be using a standard set, which is primary colors only, um, and it's student grade acrylic. So let me show you the brand that I'm using. But you're welcome to use absolutely any acrylic paint that you have. You don't have to use particularly this brand. Any student grade acrylic is wonderful. So I'm going to be using primary colors plus black and white. Primary colors are blue, yellow, red, plus black and white. And I'll be mixing all shades of this out of primaries. However, if you have premixed greens, awesome, you can use them. If you have premixed pinks, great, you can use them. And of course, the rest we're gonna be mixing. So I hope that explains all of that. Now to answer your question, um, estimating painting time, hmm, tough question. I would say anywhere between hour and a half to two hours. I would say closer to hour and a half, most likely, because it's, I would say on an easier side. So yeah, likely closer to hour and a half. Could go longer, could be less but probably around there. And if you guys joining us for the first time, the video is gonna be available after as well. So if you cannot stay the entire event, uh, something comes up and you can do this today or you have to go, that's okay. The video is gonna stay right here on our YouTube page. It's not going anywhere. So you're gonna come back and watch it any other time. All right, so let's talk about how we're going to do this. We're gonna start with our sky. So we're going to take our white and a couple different shades of blue and just with horizontal brushstrokes, we're going to cover about half of our camera, so the upper half. We're not going to do clouds right away. We're going to move on to the mountains and we're going to build our mountains, mountains one at a time. So we're going to start with this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. So every following mountain is going to be darker, darker and darker. And we're always gonna start from the outline because that's gonna be the darker part. So the darkest part is gonna be that line. So we're gonna start for every mountain by putting a line right here. And then we're gonna be blending that line into a lighter color going down. And again, that applies for every single mountain here. Once we have all our mountains, we're gonna move to our trees. So we're gonna add our couple black trees right here. Once we have that, all this will need to start drying up because we can do this on wet. We'll have to wait for our trees to dry fully. And as it's drying, we can work a little bit on our clouds. And guys, actually, if you have a hair dryer, that might be very useful today because um, this trees and this mountain has to be fully, fully dry before we can move to our grass right here and our flowers. And also our pink and our color for flowers we're gonna need to have our green a little bit drier. So again, because of the way this painting is sectioned out and the way that we're gonna do it, it's best if you have a hair dryer. It's gonna really help you. But if not, if that's okay too. You, again, we're not in a rush. You have all the time. You can um, always take a break and then come back because the video is gonna be here. All right, so that's pretty much all we need to know. So what we're gonna start with is we're gonna put our colors on our palette and we're gonna put everything but red. You don't need right, red right now. So you're gonna put your um, white, black, blue, and yellow if you're using primaries. If you're using premix, you're gonna put blue, white, and green. So either. And we'll go from there and I'll do the same. All right, guys, I have my four colors. 
white, black, blue, and yellow. And I'm going to grab my large brush now. And I suggest you do the same. Grab your large brush, dip it in the water. I'm going to switch this. Actually, I can even use them side by side for now. And I'm going to move my laptop a little so you can see it better. All right. And now, so do you see I dipped my large brush in the water? Now I'm going to take straight white, not mixed with anything, and I'm going to add a couple brush strokes of white somewhere on the upper part. And then I'm going to start mixing light blues. Uh, you don't have to stick with a particular shade of light blue. If you have more than one shade of light blue, that's actually even better. So just grab a little bit of white, a little bit of blue, mix them up. And with those light blues, we're going to start adding horizontal lines and blending them into that white. Now, we're not looking for a perfect blending here. We do want it streaky, but however, you, do want, you don't want to see any white canvas coming through. You want to have, to a certain degree, pretty solid coverage. So this is pretty light. Now I'm going to add a slightly darker shade of blue. And again, the more shades of blue you can fit here, the better. So don't go by particular shades. If from the first try you already were able to fit in a few shades of blue, great, stop. So I'm going to add a couple streaks of slightly darker color here. All right, and that's great. I don't want to do anything else for my sky. Now, guys, something for you to think about is if you want to do your edges, it is best to do them as you go because now you have this paint, so you can just go right over the top and the edge and just spread a little bit more of this paint over the top and over the edge. Move to next color. When you go to the edge with that color, to the top or to the side or to the bottom, Feel free to just bring the same color on the edge. That way, once we're done, it's going to look really nice. It's going to look like your wrapped your image around your canvas. I wouldn't really be doing this because I'm holding my painting a lot. So if I do my edge, it's going to end up on my hands and potentially I will smudge it elsewhere. So it can just create a big mess and it's a recipe for disaster. So that's why. I'm gonna just stick to my top and the side and the front. But if you have ability, if you're not holding your canvas, doing edges right away is a good way to go. All right, so whenever you guys have this, give me a thumbs up, let me know that you have it and that you're ready. And then we're gonna move to the next step. And in the meantime, I'm gonna make sure my large brush is nice and clean, and I'll put it aside. I see some thumbs up, that's good. I'll wait a couple more minutes because that's not a lot of thumbs up. And then we're going to move to the next step. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to answer them to the best of my ability.
All right, I see lots of thumbs up, which is great. Then we're gonna move to our next step. So we're gonna move on to our mountains. And we're gonna start with this really small mountain at the back. And that's a really good practice mountain because it's very simple, just two colors. Um, and it's good to kind of figure out that technique before we move to more complicated mountains. So you're gonna be using the exact same brush. I'm gonna take my large brush again, I dipped it in the water. And now I'm gonna make uh, blue, just white and blue again, but just a little bit darker than my background. So if this is blue-ish that I used for my background, I'm gonna make it slightly darker. So because I don't have too much, I'm gonna start from scratch again. I'm gonna put some white because I don't have enough paint. So I'm gonna put some white, then I'm gonna take some blue, mix them up. But this time I'm aiming to make it just a little darker than what I had on my background. Now, I think this should work well, but we're gonna try it. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna add a mountain somewhere around here. Great, I have a mountain, I have a line. Now I'm gonna wash off my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and right away I'm gonna start smudging this side of this mountain. into this distance here. Do you see? It looks like blending now because I blended this section, this side of the line into the background. And it's gonna be hardly visible, so don't worry about going too far or working on all those sections. What you're gonna see is this. As long as this is good, that's all that matters. All right, with other mountains though, as we go further, here we just blended it into background. On the next mountains, we're gonna blend it to different color versus the background. So we're gonna use two colors. Here is just one color and the background. Going further, it's gonna be color, second color, and blend from one color to another. So again, I'll give another second for this mountain, and then we're gonna move to the next one, which is gonna be this one. Yeah, so that you're right, Cindy. You have to blend right away, you can't wait. As soon as you put it on, you have to blend right away. You cannot wait. So as soon, did you see, I put it, as soon as I put line, I washed my brush and I started blending right away. And also another thing too is, make sure you use a good amount of paint. If you don't use enough paint, it's gonna dry even faster. So you have to use a fair bit of paint for it to stay wet for um, long enough for you to blend it, even if you blend right away. All right, so I'm gonna move to my next mountain now. And for my next mountain, I'm gonna make even darker color. So to the same color we just used, I still have a little bit of it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add more of my primary blue. And you see it gets darker. It's not as dark as just straight primary blue but it is darker. And I'm gonna add, again, a line for the mountain. Right over this one, don't worry about your first mountain anymore. And you see a fair bit of paint again. And here I'm gonna spread it a little bit further, down here. And now as I've done this, I'm gonna lighten up my blue. So to the same color I just used, I'm gonna take white and I'm gonna add it in to create lighter blue. And with this lighter blue, I'm gonna start coloring this corner from the bottom up. So do you see I, I colored in this bottom section and now I'm gonna blend them because my two colors are not merged. So you can either wash off your brush and dab it off on a paper towel for this, or just make sure you don't have too much paint on your brush. So just dab off a uh, brush with paint on it to make sure you only have a little bit left. 
And with this color, with this lighter blue, I'm gonna continue going up into my darker blue. Not all the way, because you wanna keep that top dark, right? And then once you reached almost top, not very top, you're gonna start going down. So you're gonna go towards light blue. Once you went almost down, all the way down, not all the way down, almost all the way down, you're gonna continue going up again. And you continue doing that, going up a little, um, going down a little, up a little, down a little, up a little, creating that beautiful blending here. And your brush strokes don't have to be straight either. If they are, that's okay, that's not a problem. But if you wanna have a bit more texture, you can make your brush strokes wavier. Either will work just fine, both is great. So do you see we have two mountains now? One is a little further, a little lighter, a bit more in the distance, and second one is a little more visible because it's a little closer. And again, when you guys have it, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you have it. And we're going to move to this two mountains on the side. We'll do this one first and then this one, the dark one. But no rush. If you need a bit more time, take your time. Just let me know when you're ready. All right, I see lots of thumbs up, that's good. Great. Let's move to our next mountain then. So for our next mountain, we're gonna go back to this color. So make this color again. Do you remember the color that we added for the first line here? For our second mountain, this darker blue. So make that one again. Again, using your large brush. And that to that color, which is gonna add a little bit of black. So I'm gonna take a tiny little touch of black, not a lot, because we don't wanna turn it into black. And black is a bossy color. It's very powerful. It will overtake um, everything if you add a little too much of it. So I think this should be good. So do you see it's still blue? It just has this a little bit of darkness, a little bit more darkness and a little dimmer. It's a little dimmer than just vibrant blue. And with this, I'm gonna add a mountain and I'll cross my previous two mountains and it's gonna go a little bit further. So from here. And of course, I'm gonna add a bit more of it here. Just a little. And now, right away, I'm gonna move to my next color, which to the same color I just used, I'm gonna add yellow. So do you see I added yellow and it got a greener. 
and just a little bit of white. Not a lot, we're not trying to make it very light. We just want it to be more bright. So just a touch of white. And with this greener color that's slightly lighter than the top, we're gonna finish up the section. So we're gonna go lower, we're gonna cover this uncovered canvas and then we're gonna blend it into the top of the mountain. You don't have to go too high up again. Just make sure the transition between two colors is somewhat smooth so they don't look like completely unmerged two colors. It's mostly what matters. You don't have to go too low here either because there's still gonna be another mountain there. I might even go lighter here, so I'm just gonna take a little bit more yellow, a little bit more white, add it here, and maybe even lighten it up a touch. Again, when you guys have it, give me thumbs up, let me know, and then we're gonna move to our next color, but no rush. And if there's something that's not working out for you guys, just let me know what it is. I'll try to help you with everything that I can. Yes. Awesome. All right. I see lots of thumbs up. That's great, guys. So we're going to move to our last mountain here then. And the last one, we're going to um, make, again, dark blue, but this time even darker than that. So this one is going to be primary blue, so the darkest version, mixed with a touch of black. So it's going to be really dark. And then we're going to mix it to dark blue. So it's dark color mixing into dark color. Dark, uh, sorry, dark green on dark blue, dark green on the bottom. And dark green, is it's gonna be dark, it's gonna be darker than this green, but this should still be darker than this. So we're blending two colors here, right? Dark blue with a smidge of black into dark green. Dark green is gonna have no black in it, so it's still gonna be a little bit lighter than the outline color. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with the outline color, and I'm gonna scoop on the side some of that straight primary blue. So let's put it somewhere here. Then to that blue, I'm gonna take just a tiny, tiny smidge of black. You see, not a lot of it. And I'll mix it in. Um, actually, I could mix a bit more. I think this should be good. It still looks blue, but very dark. And with this, I'm gonna add 
my line somewhere around here. Oh yeah, that's a perfect color. It's very dark, but when you look close up at it, it is actually visibly blue. Now, I, I, from where I stand, I know maybe ca camera doesn't pick it up, but I can see 100% that this is blue. It's not, it's not gonna be confused with black. And of course, you can bring a couple more brush strokes down here if you want to. And then we're gonna make that dark green. So for the dark green, I'm not even gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna take some yellow, scoop it on the side, then to that yellow, I'm gonna take primary blue and add it in. And do you see? It's a fairly dark green. I did not add any black to it, just dark blue. That's why it's dark green. And no white either. Yellow and dark blue, that's it. And with this, I'm gonna finish this bottom part. I'm gonna color this bottom part. And of course, I'm gonna blend this into the top. And if your previous mountain is still a little wet, and let's say you're, as you blend, it starts picking up colors from previous mountains, not a bad thing, don't be afraid of it. The more shades you actually fit into your mountains, the better. Two shades is bare minimum. If you wanna fit more shapes, uh, more shades, great. So for example, if you have unexpected shades happen here, awesome. Embrace them, love them, keep them. So that's pretty much it for my mountains. And again, if you're doing your edges, don't forget about them. Go into your edge as well. Um, for me, this is done. So I'm gonna wash off my brush, make sure my large brush and is nice and clean and I'll put it aside because I'm not gonna be using my large brush anymore. I'm only gonna be using medium and potentially small brush here. And also guys, if you can now, go change your water because your water is super, super green. For example, mine is. It's like bluey green. And the next thing we're gonna do, actually, don't worry, no worries, sorry, I apologize. Don't change your water yet. We still have to do the trees. We'll do trees in black, then I'll change your water because I was thinking we need to do clouds and we do need to do clouds, just not yet. Um, before clouds, we're gonna need to change water because clouds are super white. So we don't wanna have that dirty water because it's gonna be really hard to make those white clouds with uh, almost black water. So let's add those trees and then we'll change our water, we'll do clouds. But again, I'll give you another minute. Whenever you guys have it, give me a thumbs up. And then we're gonna move to our trees right here. But no rush. Good, I'm glad you like my painting. Awesome, I see a couple thumbs up. That's good, I'll give you guys a couple more minutes.
Mm -hmm. Right, I see a couple of thumbs up, which is great. All right, I see lots more good to go. So we can move to our trees. Well, guys, um, so what I'm gonna do right now, I'm not gonna show you how to do trees on the front of my canvas. I'm gonna show you a couple of different options on how to do trees on the back of my canvas first. So you can decide which option works better for you. And only after that, we're gonna move on to actually making trees together on the front of our canvases. So I'm gonna turn my canvas around still a little wet actually. Let me show you on the back of this one because this one I'm afraid to turn around because this might get damaged if it touches my easel. So I'm gonna show you on the back of this one instead. And for the trees, I'm gonna be using my medium square brush and, but medium pointy brush will also work here. And regardless of what brush we're using, we're always gonna start with positioning our tree trunks. So I'm gonna start by positioning tree trunk for, this is just example, right? So always from the bottom up, you're gonna flick your tree trunk. Now, it's important that all our trees maintain the triangular shape. So this is just example. This is not what you're gonna do. It's very important that all trees maintain tri triangular shape, which means they need to have a pointed top and gradually get wider as they go down. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be doing flips from the inside, so from the tree trunk out towards one side, another side, one side, another side, and so on, using the top edge of my medium square brush. So this is the top edge. So medium square brush, there are two ways I can use like that flat. It's gonna give me a really thick line, right? The full width of a brush. Or I can use the top edge and it can give me a really fine line. Or I can do this and let's mix, right? I'm starting by using the full width and then I switch just to the edge. Right? So there are many ways I can use this one brush. Or I can use top edge but push a little harder. Can you see? It's a little bit thicker line but not as thick. And you can always get a pointy end by just flicking that edge, right? So that's how I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use the top edge and I'm gonna flick from the top to the side, but on the top, I'm gonna do really, really small flicks. And as I go down, my flicks are gonna get wider. And at the beginning on the top, I'm actually just using the corner of my brush. And that's where you could technically be using a smaller brush just at the top because it's hard because the top needs to be so small that you might even wanna use a small brush there if you're not comfortable using your medium brush. And then as we go down, the flicks are gonna be getting longer and longer and longer. You see, and you're still flicking from the inside out. And guys, another thing I always suggest is practice. Practice on a separate piece of paper first. Practice on the back of your canvas. Practice on your palette. Practice on your um, tablecloth. On anything that you can before you go onto the actual canvas. Try it first. And because I'm going to show you how to do it in a couple of different ways, try all the ways that I'm showing you to see which one works better for you. All right, so this is one way to do it. Do you see just flicks from the inside out? You're always gonna start to flicks from the middle line. Always, always, always. Um, because do you see we need to have the middle pretty solid in the end. You cannot see a tree trunk, just super solid and a really nice pointy flicks on the ends. And you see it maintains that triangular shape. It has a pointy peak, pointy top, and then it gradually gets wider. That's important. Okay, so this is one way to do it. Let's talk about way number two to do it. It's a little simpler. So I'm gonna put a tree trunk, and here I'm only gonna do horizontal lines. 
So if here I did on the angle, right, from the middle to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, and so on. Here I'm just gonna do horizontal, but again, it's gonna maintain that triangular shape. So I'm gonna start by using the top edge of my medium brush and doing really, really small horizontal flicks. And as I go down, I'm gonna continue adding horizontal lines, right? I'm building my tree out of those horizontal lines. This is a little easier. And again, I'm still using the top edge of my medium brush just because I find it easier to work with. Maneuver. All right, that's option number two. Just the top edge of my medium square brush all the way. Just maintain that shape. And the last one, we're gonna do dabs or small brushes. So you put a vertical line again for the tree trunk, and now you can dab, and you can use here a medium pointy brush, a medium square brush, doesn't matter at all. So I'm just gonna dab. I'm using pretty much the corner of my medium square brush, but full flat is fine too. And I'm making the same triangular shape just out of dabs. And you see, here's another option. Um, it is slightly different look. All three have slightly different look, but overall they have things in common. Triangular shape, point to top, pretty solid in the middle. So you get to choose which style you're gonna use for your treats. And again, I would highly, highly recommend try all three versions on separate piece of paper first to see which one comes more natural to you. Which one is easier? Which one do you like more? Your version of it. So, and then whenever you know which one that is, that's the one we're gonna do there. So I'm gonna turn this around, guys. So if you need to take a photo or a mental picture of this, do it. Um, but also, because this is a video tutorial <laughs> that's gonna, that being recorded as we do it, right? You can always rewatch this piece. So even now you can scroll back and rewatch while we're live. But once this is completely recorded and video, the live portion of it is done, that you're gonna be able to even pause it. So you can always rewatch it as many times as you need to get it right or just to see me do it again, which is a great option to have. All right, I'm turning this around. And we're going to this one. And now here, we're gonna start by positioning our trees. So we're gonna put all tree trunks here. I have five trees, so I'm gonna put five tree trunks. You see there are different heights, some taller, some shorter, and that's what matters. You can position them differently and that's fine, as long as you have a variety of sizes. So using the top edge of my brush, I'm gonna put my tallest one. I usually, I personally really like starting with the tallest one, always. And I'm gonna put slightly shorter one, then shorter one here, and two small ones. Great, I have positioned all my tree trunks and now I'm gonna turn them into trees. So again, either use the medium brush or start with a small brush for the very tip of your trees because it's hard to do it uh, with a medium brush, especially if you're not comfortable with it or if you don't have a good medium brush. You can always start with a small brush instead. And then as um, you start getting comfortable and you get to the wider portions of the trees, so you can switch to a medium brush or if you can do all of it with a media brush, great, you can do that too. And 
We're doing this in black, guys. Straight black. All right, so here are all my trees. Now, I'm happy with my trees, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'll wash my brush and I'll switch my water. So I'll change my water to have a clean water and then we're gonna move to clouds. But again, I'll give you guys a couple of minutes, do your trees, and as soon as you have your trees, um, wash off your brush, change your water. You don't have to do the same amount of trees as me. You can have more or less completely up to you. This is just what I have. Totally, if you need to modify it, go for it. it will still look great. Oh, thank you, Vicky. I love this dress too. It's very spring-like. It has all the flowers on it. I'm just loving, so thank you. I appreciate that. I'll take all the compliments you want to give me. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'm gonna go wash my brush, brush and change my water. And I will see you guys soon. So just whenever you have that done as well, your brushes, um, sorry, your trees, once you wash the brush and change your water, let me know in chat here that you're ready, and then we're going to move to our clouds. All right, I have my clean water.
Okay, no thumbs up yet, so I'll give you guys a couple minutes. And in the meantime, I can answer some questions if you have any questions. Yeah, so you can definitely do this later and no problem at all. Um, yes, me too, thank you. It's so much fun to play with too. Uh, to answer your question, I don't really understand what exactly you're asking, but I'm, if you're asking what blue I use for the sky, um, I can show you. Oh no, I actually can't show you. Oh no, I can. Never mind. I found blue. I think it's, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correct for phthalo blue. Phthalo blue. So that's the blue I'm using, but any primary blue will work. There's no particular shade of blue you have to use for the sky. Whatever blue you have in this case, doesn't matter. As long as you can make it darker or lighter, it's all that matters. So I guess it's good to have a darker blue and just to work your way down in like lightness and make it lighter versus having light blue and having tried to make it darker because that's hard. Um, and for the trees, that was black. Black. And again, I'm using a student grade acrylic. For those who are wondering, it is not a watercolor, not an oil, student grade acrylic, but you can use any acrylic. If you want to attempt this in watercolor, um, I will caution you because, and I'll tell you why it's not going to work. There is a reason why, and the reason why is from watercolor, you can always go dark darker 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 you have to do the light parts first and then work your way to dark we teach watercolor classes too so it's just a different system with acrylic you can go from dark to light from light to dark doesn't matter because you have white in watercolor sometimes you have a white color too but it's never that good and it's never meant to be used for full-on layers and it's never going to give you a full coverage and here because we just did super dark right and then we're going to move to super light grass and a light flowers you cannot do that in watercolor. If you were to do all this that we're gonna do right now here in watercolor, this is gonna be super dark. It's not gonna be light because we're putting it on a dark section. Watercolor is transparent paint. So if you put something on a dark area, such as this almost black, right? It's gonna come out crazy dark in the end. With acrylic though, it doesn't matter. Acrylic can cover anything underneath it. And if you want to attempt this in oil, go for it. I think this will actually work for oil really well as well. All right, good. I see some readies, thumbs up, and good to go. Great. For the grass, I'm gonna show you what to use. Um, I'll show you the greens that we're gonna use. We're not gonna do the grass just yet. We need to let um, the trees dry up for a little bit. So hopefully while we work on our clouds, this is gonna dry up, and if not, we're gonna grab our hair dryers and they're gonna blow dry it. Hair dry this to be able to move um, to the grass and the flowers and flowers you can do any color i'm going to be doing my pink but you can do yours any color so for right now you're just going to need your medium brush and white paint and we're going to do our clouds and medium brush can be square pointy doesn't matter for the step and i'm going to start actually let me bring this a little closer to you guys i'm going to start by putting a wavy line You see, taller in the middle, and then it gets kind of flatter on the sides. And then I'm gonna add a few more of those lines. You see, overall it is thicker in the middle, pointier on the sides. And I'm gonna add a few of those. So, and you can do more than one layer as well. See, wavy lines, fluffier middle, point your sides. So like you have two little tails on the sides. I'll add another cloud here. Mm 
Yeah, maybe one more here. Doesn't matter. You can have one cloud, you can have three clouds, you can have 10 clouds, as many as you can fit. The only thing I would say, a, try to make them different in sizes and shapes, at least slightly. They don't have to be a copy paste. You don't want them to look like a copy paste cloud. And I'm gonna show you what not to do as well in a second on the back of my canvas. I'll show you no-nos for clouds. All right, guys, so let me show you on the back what is a big no-no for clouds. So what you don't wanna do is this. You don't wanna have a cotton ball kind of cloud. So that's a no-no, do not do that. Another no-no is this, clouds that are this shape. That's a big no-no as well. And I'm gonna show you the clouds that I just did again. So it's like this. Do you see wavy lines, wavy lines? Then more wavy lines, more wavy lines. You see? So this looks fluffier, and then it has nice pointy tails on the sides. All right, so this is good. Now I'm gonna go clean my brush under, actually it doesn't matter, I can wash it in this water. If your clouds are slightly different than mine, that's okay too, as long as they're not cotton ball clouds. Um, to answer your question, does the blue of sky needs to be dry for clouds? Doesn't matter at all. If your blue is still wet, that will still work for you. But it likely is dry because we did, we started with sky and we've been working for an hour at this point on this, so your sky should be dry at this point. But if it wasn't, you can still do it. It's not gonna affect it. To answer your question, how you can share the picture of your paintings, actually, good question. Um, you can post it on event page on Facebook that we created specifically for this event. So I'm gonna send you a link so you don't have to go on the internet and try to Google it and search it. I'm gonna send you a direct link, which is just easier. You can just click on it and it will bring you right to the Facebook event. And then you can post it there. But we'd love to see it. We love seeing your results, guys. That's like something we always look forward to. But we're not there yet. We still have quite a few steps to go, just so you know. But because you asked, uh, I will share a link with you now. I'll share it with you later too. So that link that I just sent you is a link to Facebook event that we created for this painting where you can share your results after we're done. Yes, I can definitely show you how to do different flower in the end too, no problem. And guys, I just used white for clouds, no blue, just white. All right, so now we can move to our grass. In my case, those trees are dry, do you see? Fully dry. Now, if yours are not dry, let them dry first. Don't move to your grass until your trees are dry. If you need to grab a hair dryer, grab a hair dryer, or if you just wanna let it dry and just hang out with me for now and watch what I do and maybe do actually your uh, steps from now on later from the recording that's okay too completely up to you but your trees has to be dry they have to be dry before you move to grass so grass we're gonna do in a couple of different colors you're gonna do light green you're gonna do medium green you're gonna do dark green and you're gonna do black so we're gonna start with a medium green 
Medium green, actually, I need some blue. Medium green is very simple color to make. It's just yellow and blue, and that is it. In this case, you can add a little bit of white to it because we're adding over the dark section, right? So for us to have it more visible, we need to have some white. So I'm gonna scoop some yellow, and I'm gonna add a little bit of blue, not equal parts. You need less blue, more yellow, because uh, blue is more dominant color, so you need less of it. And then, of course, some white. Mix it up, make about medium green. That's nothing particular, just medium green is great. And with this color, I'm gonna start adding flicks. I'm gonna be using the top edge of my medium brush. And you see I'm flicking from the bottom up. And we're gonna fill this entire thing with the grass. So you can flick down, but this section has to be all flicks from the bottom up. You cannot start here, you always have to start here because the grass needs to have pointy tips. And if you start from top and flick down, it's gonna have a blobby tip, not a pointy tip. I'm gonna make a bit more of this color because I ran out. All right, so that is a first layer of our grass. And once you have the first layer, we're gonna add highlights and shadows. Highlights, we're just gonna make a couple more flicks with a lighter color, and shadows, we're just gonna make a couple more flicks with a darker color. Doesn't really matter which one you start with, darker or lighter. I think I'm gonna start with lighter. So I'm just gonna take more yellow, um, yellow, a little bit of this green and some white, and I'll mix it up to make a very, very light green color, almost yellow. And with this one, I'm just gonna flick a couple more spots. So do you see, it looks like highlights. And I'm gonna do them mostly closer to the top. But on the bottom is okay too. Not really, we're not very particular about where we're gonna position. We're just trying to break it all up a bit. But I'm mostly positioned closer to the top. So that's my highlights. And now I'm gonna do the darker pieces. So to the same green we used earlier, I'm just gonna take a bit more blue, not black, blue. And you see, it turned into a darker green. And with this one, I'm gonna add a couple of darker spots. Again, so all the way through, I'm just gonna break it up with the slightly darker ones here and there.
And for my last color for the section is, I'm gonna do a little bit of black. So I'm gonna take just a touch of black. And this, I'm only gonna flick from the bottom, from the very bottom of the canvas, just a little bit. Not everywhere, just choose a couple spots and flick it there. Again, just to break a little bit. Alright, I'm done my grass, so I'm going to give you guys a bit more time to do your grass, and when you're ready, when you have your grass, let me know, give me thumbs up, say good to go, and we're going to move to our flowers, and guys, for your flowers, it is best if your grass is somewhat dry, doesn't have to be fully dry, of course, it's more ideal if it was fully dry, but it doesn't have to, we still can work on it even if it's not fully dry, but it has to be half dry or at least a little bit more dry than just fresh wet paint. So again, if you have a hair dryer, that will be very useful here. You can just blow dry it and then we'll move to your flowers. If not, that's okay. Again, you can either go with wet one and just take your chances because again, it's doable. It's, you, it doesn't have to be fully dry. It's just easier to work with it's fully dry. and I guess it's more ideal for that exact reason. So after you, you can even, um, again, just wait for a little longer, just watch what I do and then do it at, on your own timing once it dries or hair dry it. And again, I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes. And then let me know when you have it. To answer your question, if you want to have pink flowers, you will need red for them. If you don't want to have pink flowers, you don't need red. So up to you. You can have your flowers any color that you want. All right, I see one thumbs up. That's good. To answer your questions, guys, yes, this should be fully covered. You don't want to see any canvas through. You need to have a full coverage. All 
right, so I think I see a couple thumbs up, so I think we can move to our flowers. And again, if you're not there yet, that's okay. You can always do this later. Um, you can use any red or any color for that matter. Guys, I'm gonna be doing my flowers in um, two different shades of pink. I'm gonna be using dark pink and a lighter pink. So because I don't have pre-mixed pink, I'm gonna be mixing mine out of red and white. However, if you have pre-mixed pink, you're welcome to use it. If not, you can switch it to, let's say, purple. You can do purple flowers, you can do blue flowers, you can do orange flowers completely up to you, any color that you want. It doesn't have to be specifically pink. Now to answer your question, what kind of flowers and what the name of the flower is, I have no idea. It's a pretty filled flower, that's all I know. It's a very pretty flower. I don't know the name of it, unfortunately. All right, so here, ideally, if you have medium pointy brush, that's what you're gonna be using, if you have it. If not, you can still use a medium square brush, you're just gonna dab on a corner of your brush. Or you can dab the entire width. It's completely up to you. Just you, if you dab the entire width, they're gonna, they're gonna have this little square corners. If you dab the corner, they're gonna be a bit more rounded. And you can use the rounded brush to dab as most ideal option. When I was making that one, I was actually dabbing with the corner of this brush. So again, it's doable, but this brush will give you easier time if you have it. And we're gonna start with a darker pink here. So I'm gonna grab some red. So I'm gonna put some red on my palette. In my case, this is just primary red, nothing special. And I'm gonna grab some of that on the side. I'll put it here. I'll grab some white and I'll mix them up to make nice, bright, saturated pink. So we're not aiming for a light pink here. We're aiming for a dark pink. All right, and now with this, I'm gonna start dabbing. So let me dab one. They're still gonna be like that. And some are gonna be bigger, some are gonna be smaller. So just the dots. You see, it's a fluffier in the middle. And then it goes, so the biggest section is here, then goes smaller, smaller, pointy, smaller, smaller, pointy, to the top and the bottom. Can you use earbuds for the flowers? You can try. You can definitely use Q-tip to dab flowers too. If you have a Q-tip at home, that will give you a really good dabs here. So I'm gonna make lots of those. So fluffier in the middle, then pointier on top, and pointier on the bottom. And you can position them anywhere you want. Lots and lots and lots of those. Bigger, smaller. One a variety, right?
Right, so did you see I added lots of those flowers? This is my first layer. I might add one or two more. And then I'm gonna move on to my second layer. Huh. I think this is good. And for my second layer, I'm just gonna add a bit more white into the same color. So I'm gonna take some white, add it in, and you see it turns into nice light pink. So with this light pink, I'm just gonna dab uh, this color over those colors. Not as much, you don't wanna cover it up fully, you just wanna add a bit of different color to all of them. You can do some more to some, less to others, that's okay too. Ta-da! Two layers. Great. All right, guys. And then I'm going to add white highlights. So I'm going to take straight white. And I'll add a little bit of straight white on every single flower as well. Just a touch. We're not trying to add a lot of straight white. Just a little bit. Guys, for those of you who just joined us and you're wondering what paint I'm using, I am using Student Grade Acrylic. All right, I added some white to them too. Great. Oh, nice. Yes, thank you for the name of flowers. Guys, there's a name of flowers in chat for those who are wondering. And after that, we're gonna finish up with the white dots. So white dots you can do with either tip of your small brush, or you can do them with the bottom part, do you see? Not painting part. So especially, this needs to be rounded though. Do you know how some brushes have the rounded edge on the bottom, the not painting part, and some have it flat, like someone took an ax and chopped it off. So if the yours is flat, it's not gonna give you good dots, so then use um, the pointy end, so the painting end of your small brush. However, if this back end is rounded, that's perfect for dotting, you can use that. So I'm gonna be using that, and we're gonna dub up um, dots around our flower. So do you see this flower, for example? I'm gonna dab some dots around it, on top and the bottom. I'm not really adding them on the actual flower, it's more like a couple around it. I'm not going all the way around though with like a circle of dots. It's just a couple on the sides up and a couple on the sides down. See? To just visually extend it in a way.
Yeah, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for joining. And guys, if you're just joining us now, start from the beginning. I go through everything and everything here. As far as what materials we're using, you're free to just rewind to the beginning and you will see the full coverage of what paint we're using, the canvas, uh, what colors, everything, everything, everything. You may be wondering how the sky's done, how the mountains are done, how the clouds are done. Yay, <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. And guys, yes, if this is your first time joining us, we go live uh, about twice every week here on YouTube, and it's always something new and different. And most of the time it is acrylic paintings, but we also do watercolor and drawings, pencil drawings. So you might find those as well. And you're welcome to join for anything that you want. You also do have Zoom classes that we do pretty much daily. Um, again, for acrylic and watercolor and pencil drawings, but we also have oil painting Zoom classes. So yes, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do. That way YouTube should notify you when we go live next. And again, all our YouTube live events are completely free to join and the videos stay up for a while. So you can rewatch them anytime if when we're live that time doesn't work for you. And if anyone is interested in checking out our Zoom classes, please do. We have an on our website, which is artistpalettedurhamregion.com. We'll put it in chat here as well. So feel free to take a look and see what we have coming up. And the good thing about Zoom classes, if you have never tried them before, is that you can always show your painting actual picture to artists to get feedback through the class and you can ask questions verbally <laughs> so those are good things all right so here's a link to our website for those who are interested in zoom events and for those who are interested in upcoming youtube live events of course subscribe YouTube will notify you when we go live. Uh, and you can always see what we have coming up as far as live events. But also, if you want to see the full schedule of everything we have coming up, you can go right here. I'm going to send you a link right now. Um, that link is for our Facebook events um, tab. That's where we schedule our events and we schedule them about a month in advance. So if you look here under this link, you will see everything that we have coming up in the next month. Zoom classes and YouTube live classes. So here is the link. So just click there and you'll see everything that's coming up. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it here. However, I do wanna show you how to do a daisy-like flower, just in case you wanted to add something else here. So for a daisy-like flower, you're gonna be using small brush and white paint, or at least that's what I will be using. Let's add a few of those. So I'm just gonna do this flicking from the outside in. I'm gonna put a couple of flower petals. We can make some bigger, some smaller. You see, those are just flicks from the outside in. And it's not an original painting, but why not, right? It's good to have options.
And then in this daisy, so I'm going to add a yellow middle. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow. I have yellow right here, actually. And then I'm just going to add a dot in the middle. All right. And that is done. Guys, the last thing you need to do is sign it. So choose a good spot and make sure you put your name or your initials or your signature, anything that you want. I'm going to sign mine right here. And if you have done your edges, great. If you haven't, you can do them now. And there are a couple of ways you can do it. One is you can color match your edges. So for example, you can just look what color here is and wrap that color around the edge. But that means you're going to need to mix them all again. Or you can just grab black and do all your edges with black and that will just nicely frame it and it's gonna get rid of that weird looking messy edge. Or you can do blue as well because you have a lot of blue in this painting too so that will look good but either will work well. Now let me answer any questions that you may have here. Yes, great, I'm so glad you learned. Uh, to answer your question, Zoom classes are paid. They are $10 Canadian, and they do come with a recording as well. So for every Zoom class, we make a pre-recorded video tutorial for that painting. So if anyone cannot come to actual Zoom event, but they buy their ticket, we will be sending a link to recording, and you have a lifetime access to it. So you can watch it, re-watch it as many times as you want. We ask that you don't share it because it's a private, it's for your personal use only but um, you can use it as many times as you want. So you can rewatch it, you can make hundreds of those paintings if you wanted to use in that tutorial, um, or you can try just different options. And of course, YouTube live classes are completely free. Which by the way, if you wanna say thank you by tipping me, I would never say no to that. You don't have to, it's not an obligation. I'm happy to be here. But if that's your way of saying thank you, I would not stop you from doing that. <laughs> and I'm gonna send you a tip link here, and it's a PayPal link. Done, okay, I put it in chat here. Yay. I'm glad you guys enjoying this. Yeah. Um, to answer your question, yes, we do YouTube live classes about twice a week. So if you take a look in our channel or in that link that I send you um, on our, to our Facebook event page, you can see all the YouTube live classes that are coming up in the next month. And I have quite a few. And guys, of course, share your paintings with us. We would love to see them only if you want to. No pressure. If you'd rather not, that's okay. But if you want to, you can share them here on Facebook page made specifically for this event. So then we and everyone else who participated can also see how they turned out. So feel free to do that. But no pressure if you would rather not, that's okay. All right, if no one has any questions, I'm gonna let you guys finish in peace. And again, if you wanna add more flowers of different colors, Go for it. If you want to add a bird, let's say, go for it. If you want to add some creature in a distance, maybe a deer, um, go for it. 
Anything you can think of, you can do this. And thanks for joining me, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your night. Bye, guys.